Uh, the sound sample that you're about to hear uh, is a uh, kick, snare, uh, high tom, and mid tom. Uh, these were tracked into a modified uh, 002 using a Vintec uh, on the kick and the snare uh, and using a modified SM Pro on the uh, toms. Uh, and the D to A that you're hearing it back through is a modified 002 D to A. And then we're going to switch to an unmodified 002 to kind of give you some idea of what the sonic differences are between the two. So. All right, so this take is out of the unmodified 002, full volume out, zero dB or plus 15 dB in the analog world. So here we go. Now there's a couple of things at play here. <clears throat> uh, number one, you'll notice that the first one has a, uh, a lot more extended low end. Uh, it actually sounds louder. Um, you get a lot more definition out of uh, the snares, a lot more detail. Uh, first of all, um, the uh, first one has um, a different power supply in it. Uh, it's um, operating at a much higher voltage rail, so we're seeing um, much more uh, headroom in the analog stage. In fact, there's actually a 20 dB difference between the two, which is quite a bit. Uh, one of the other things that's going on is that uh, the signal path uh, actually has better quality capacitors in it. Uh, so uh, because they have lower impedance than the original ones, um, a lot more of the transients come through, a lot more of the nuance of the performance. Uh, another thing that's different is that um, we have a proprietary method of configuring uh, the converter circuit itself. Um, now this is something that you're not going to find produced anywhere. It's um, uh, a method that we developed in-house. Um, one of the effects that it gives you is lower resonance in the power supply line, and that resonance, uh, when, there, when that resonance is actually present, it, it will translate into the audio realm. Um, and so because there's lower resonance in the, in the modified one, uh, you get a little bit more smoother extended high end. Um, so, and then finally, the last thing is the clock. Um, the clock that we've designed into these, um, I think it has about one picosecond of jitter, which is, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, typically what you'll see in most commercial systems is, uh, most good ones, is a clock that has about 10 to 20 picoseconds. Uh, more of the less expensive, like mass-produced gear, usually has in the, in the nanoseconds and on up. So, uh, and what happens um, when a clock has less jitter is that there is less phase cancellation that occurs during the conversion process, so you get more of an apparent increase in volume. So it's kind of uh, the sum of all the things.